Hello, my name is Jordan. I'm here today to talk to you about uh, Cripple Creek. We're going to be learning a basic single string style arrangement. Uh, I'll go over some of the licks for you guys uh, that you can check out here in Tune Fox, and also go over some practice strategies and tips. Um, so this version is going to be great if you're a beginner. Um, if you've just learned the melody, uh, this will give us a few nice little add-ins uh, to kind of give us a little bit more embellished sound, right? With the basic arrangement, we're just going to be using a basic bum diddy kind of rhythm pattern. Bum diddy, bum diddy. Uh, when we're adding in some extra notes. Uh, and even if you're a more intermediate or advanced, even advanced Scruggs player, I think this can give you a cool perspective on the tune that you might not have thought of before uh, and just give you some new licks and new things to try out that'll be really cool to add to your uh, bag of tricks. All right, here we go. I'm gonna play through it to demonstrate how this thing should sound once we're getting a little bit more up to speed. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So now I'm going to play it slowly and count uh, as I play. If you're having a tough time with your rhythm, lots of times counting out loud helps. I know it helps a lot of my students that I teach. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one and a two and three and four. One and a two. I only played through once through so you could hear it and obviously if you need to rewind and listen a bunch We do want to make a listening part of our practice, but when you're playing it when you're working on it uh, You should try to go through multiple times We really want to play until it's easy until it's harder to get it wrong than it is to get it right And we want to be playing at speeds that we can handle right? Um, if we're making a, a lot of mistakes as we play or if we're not able to control our volume That means we probably have a lot of tension uh, we're going to need to slow it down. It's just as simple as that. Or we're going to need to maybe use that difficulty slider uh, and take some of the extra notes out. Once you get just the, the thumb movement down, uh, we can add in those index notes to get that cool single string sound. All right, before I kind of dive in uh, to what I just played and, and go over it, I want to give you some advice on how to start out your own practice sessions. Uh, mainly, I'm going to say this all the time on TuneFox, make listening a part of your practice. Listen a few times before you play each time, okay? It's really going to help. It's really going to pay off and help you develop your ears, right? We want to know how things sound, even if we're not to the point to where we can even play them yet. It's very important. Also, we want to look. We want to kind of analyze uh, what we're playing. What this can do is give us a good practice approach. Uh, for example, if I'm looking over this arrangement, uh, I notice that measures two and measures four are exactly the same. So instead of me just practicing this thing beginning to end when I'm first starting to learn it, I'm going to make sure I have measure two down, have it cold, right? And then I've also in, in turn learned measure four because they're exactly the same. So this is efficient practice. Uh, also just looking for repeating patterns um, and, and knowing maybe a foundational thing that we should practice like a uh, single string kind of bum ditty pattern or a certain role, whatever, what have you, um, we want to analyze before we play so we can practice effectively and efficiently. Um, technique wise, you know, this is pretty simple, so not a lot to go over. As with almost anything when we're playing on banjo, we want to make sure that we have good finger preparation, uh, and that's going to go for our pick hand and for our fretting hand. So in this one with the pick hand, because we're playing single string thumb index, we want to make sure that both the thumb uh, and the index are kind of close to whatever string we're about to play and we have it there ideally before we need it there. So when I'm starting this tune out, I'm going to already have my thumb here 
on the first string, ready to go. I like to have it even touching the string. That lets me know kind of uh, a kinesthetic feedback, I think it's called, right? A touch feedback, I can feel it right there on the first string. Uh, that's a good kind of awareness for, for where my thumb is on the banjo. Um, and the first finger, right? Instead of leaving it way down here, I'm gonna have it kind of close, uh, right uh, beneath that first string, right? The less we have to move, the better. That's gonna be lead to more efficiency uh, and even more speed. Uh, and as we need to switch strings, at least with the right hand, uh, or with the picking hand, excuse me, uh, after we, we pick a string, we need to try to reset it and get it over top or near whatever next string it needs to be there. So, same thing with our index finger, uh, if that's the case. Uh, for example, if we look at that transition from measure one to measure two, I'm going to play it really slowly uh, so you can see how I kind of prepare uh, my right hand, my picking hand, excuse me. Could you see there in between measure one and measure two, after I played that open note that's on the first string, that what I did is I moved both the thumb and the index so they were almost like bred around that uh, second string sandwich right there, right? They were both kind of right around it, right? So that made it so that there was very little room for error and both fingers for, were right close to the string that, that needed to be picked. Right, so that's good uh, finger preparation with the pick hand. Now finger preparation with the fretting hand, that's gonna be sort of similar, right? So when I start out the song, I've already got my finger on the, the fret that it needs to be for the first note. And then when other upcoming fretted notes, uh, you know, need when I need to make a position shift, I'm gonna do that when I'm playing open strings, right? Those are the times to make position shifts. And I'm gonna try to keep the fingers curled and over top of the fingerboard and get them over top of whatever strings or frets they need to be over top of before I need them there, right? <laughs> Finger preparation, it is important. All right, make sure to use those Tune Fox tools, right, the focus feature to practice uh, tough measures or perhaps if measures repeat, measure two, right? Use focus to listen repeatedly and practice repeatedly to get that down or to get any of them down that you need to. And you can do it on sections as well. Um, if you have a tough time with the timing on this, uh, sometimes counting and clapping a rhythm before you ever play it on your banjo is a super big help. Um, and good thing about this one, the timing of it is the same for every measure, right? So if I'm counting it, and I'm going to count one eanda, two eanda, three eanda, four eanda, here's how it's going to sound if I just clap the rhythm instead of playing it, right? One and a two and three and four and one and a two and three and and four, right? One and a two and three and four. One and a two and three and four. Okay? So if you're having a hard time with timing, maybe try to rewind that several times and count and clap along with me. Um, I promise it helps so many of my students whenever we can count and clap whatever rhythm is happening. All right, if you look at the licks, we've got a bunch of different options. Uh, there is some single string options, there's some scrug stuff, so we can kind of combine this cool single string stuff with uh, classic scrugs riffs. Uh, I want to talk about one of the riffs, so let's take a look uh, at the single string number two lick for measure number three. One, two, three, four. Alright, if I'm playing it slow. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a. All right, this one comes at the start of the B part. All right, 
So it's a really cool single string lick. Uh, and as I said, it's a good vehicle for studying technique. Uh, I'm playing it pretty fast, right? Uh, but we want to practice it slowly. Uh, really, when we're practi practicing something, the slower, the better. Uh, a lot of the time, right? Because the longer or the slower we go, the longer we will be holding fingers down. Uh, that means the muscles in the fingers are being engaged for longer. It's going to help us build strength. Uh, and good muscle memory, all right? We want to play it correct a bunch, so we're practicing playing it correctly, uh, not uh, practicing mistakes when we, when we try to go faster than we're actually able to, okay? So, right, we want to keep those fingers down whenever we're, we're walking up chromatically there on the third string. Right, and when we're going back down, we're just lifting a finger at a time. Um, one other little thing to think about here, uh, we don't want our picks too deep. We don't want them too far under the strings. So if you're looking here at my thumb, we don't want it kind of almost to the point to where it's touching the head. Same thing with the pick. Like if we get too deep, it can get stuck in there and get kind of clunky. If we try to play a bit more with the tips, it'll help with uh, speed and also reduce some pick noise. All right, so we got a great little uh, single string version of Cripple Creek. Um, we went over one cool lick. There's more waiting for you. Uh, we got some practice tips. Uh, next up, if you plan on playing with others, don't neglect your backup, right? Uh, learn some rolling backup or some vamping. It's important. Um, and then let's try to apply the good technique that we learned in this song to almost anything we're playing, right? Um, so that finger preparation and trying to play a little bit more on the tips of the picks. All right, that's all we got for today. Keep picking and stay tuned.